let's try this again. Quite a few false starts. Greetings and welcome back to my channel. So, today I'm asking the question, rather somebody else asked me that question, why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? I had a very nice long conversation with myself in the garage, on camera, a few nights ago, and the sound quality was so awful I just can't use any of that footage. Do you think the band will just slip off, off the torpedo without me having to? I tried peeling it off, but it, it's quite stuck, so here we go. Ah, what a pretty band. The Cusser Turret. It's the 1942 series. It started off incredibly acidic, like bitter, bitter earth on the tongue. But that was just the foot, so the rest, as soon as I got past the foot, uh, it became very nice, very nicely balanced, very nice flavors. So, uh, so why am I doing this? Why am I smoking cigars? Because cigars are awesome. That, that, uh, that question is very easy to answer. But why am I growing my own cigar tobacco? Now that has got a couple of facets to it. Um, of course, one of the reasons is the price of cigars in this country. And I did moan about that in a previous video, but, um, Let's have a look at some of the some of the figures, shall we? And the thing about my channel is I will not typically do cigar reviews because I don't buy that many commercial cigars that often. So it would be pointless for me to purchase six or seven cigars every six months and then give a review every what, like once a month is kind of pointless. There are many people out there doing it very, very well, doing a fantastic job of doing reviews. So you don't need me chiming in with my two cents. But if I end up with a nice cigar, I'll tell you, and this is nice, I like it. And if I end up with a terrible cigar, I'll let you know. All right, so I went through towards the Cape, towards Cape Town with my wife a couple of weeks ago now. I took with me a budget of about a thousand rand in cash and that was going to be to buy some cigars. So we ended up going to Tiger Valley Center. I knew I'd get some cigars there. There are some places closer but I have issues with them. They don't store the things correctly or they just don't have a very big selection. So I said to my wife, let's just head through to Tiger Valley. We haven't been out and about for quite a long time cat is about to jump off the table. I was worried when she jumped on. We had a couple of false starts because she likes to knock over the tripod. All right, she's out of the room. Great. So, Tiger Valley Center. I got there. I found the, uh, the Cuba, Cuba, no, Cuba Cigar Emporium. It is situated just in front of the Pick and Pay shopping center there. It's a little kiosk. It's a small little kiosk in the corner. Um, they do have a nice big cabinet style humidor with a selection of cigars. Now this time the selection was more along the budget range, which suits me fine at this stage. I would rather get a bunch of sticks that I can try something different, something new, something I've never tried before, then go for the fancy pants brands, you know, the Alec Bradleys and the Fuentes and the all the top kind of shelf stuff. Because with a thousand rand, I'd end up getting about three sticks and I would smoke them on one weekend and then have nothing in my humidor. So, I found some, uh, let's see, I got the, some custard tarants, I got a couple of uh, Reserva Doradas, those are Dominicans, there's a couple of those little S, S bundle sticks. Um, so I walked away with eight cigars for just over a thousand rand, which wasn't too bad, but four of them were on special. There was a bunch, there was one sort of shelf with uh, the Black Friday special had continued and those cigars were still priced at 100 Rand. Now, I haven't found any premium cigars in this country for 100 Rand or less. 100 Rand is, is, is probably the cheapest you'll find a premium cigar. You might find something that's not at all premium for about 100 Rand, but I'm talking about proper, premium, long filler, handmade cigars. For 100 Rand, it's an absolute no-no. You won't, you won't find them. So I grabbed four very, very quickly. And um, 
And then we went for a, another walk through the shopping center, my wife and I, and we came across another tobacco store that I'd never seen before. I don't think it was there last time I was there, which was a couple of years ago. They had the more fancier brands. So again, I had my, my little price blinkers on. I'd just blown my budget at the other place. And um, I had a look around and I saw a quorum. Now I know from Big Jimmy Cigar Review, shout out to Big Jimmy. He's doing an awesome job. I love his channel, I love his energy, I love his style. And just around Christmas, I think he was, he managed to crack the 100 sub mark. And now, I mean, barely, a month and a half later, he's almost at 300. So it just goes to show the first 100 subs are really difficult to get on your YouTube channel. But once you break through that barrier and you keep putting out good content, it snowballs from there. So well done to him. But he did a cigar review for the Quorum Shade. He loves the Quorum Shade. Well, he loves all the Quorums, but the Quorum Shade is his favorite. So when I saw Quorum, it immediately rang a bell. And I thought, hmm, let me get one. So. I got one and it costed me 160 rand. So anything under 200 rand I will consider buying. So 160 rand and now the US dollar. At the time I made my, my video in the garage, which the audio is so terrible I just couldn't use them. So echoey and um, at the time I did that video I checked out the dollar rand rate. So I'm going to stick with those figures. It was about 15 rand for a dollar. Um, it fluctuates, it's around 14, between 14 and 17 dollars. So 15 is, you know, it's pretty much average. Okay, so 160 Rand for a quorum in dollars, that is $10.66. Now I know you can pick up a quorum in America for about $2. Okay, so for a $2 cigar, I'm paying $10.66. And I have picked up some factory smokes before. Um, I bought some in Amanus. And they were priced for 150 rand each. Now again, that is ten dollars. Now know that they are two dollar cigars. All right, they are budget smokes, and I got them for the equivalent of ten dollars. And that's a pretty average price. I think I think these uh, tobacconists just they must make a bit of profit. They must make a bit of margin on those on those budget cigars. The Casa Tarrant, 1973, and I got the 1942. I paid about 180 Rand each for those ones. If you work that out to dollars, it's about $12 a cigar. And I had a look for a review online and found one that had been done fairly recently and that person had paid $8.50. So there's still quite a gap. The gap has shrunk a little bit. Um, but let's take for example, a Rocky Patel. I haven't seen a Rocky Patel in a while. And when I came back from overseas in 2013, 2014, I found a couple of Rocky Patels in a supermarket actually. Um, sort of at the you know the tobacco kiosk that we normally have in the corner of the supermarket and I actually had some Rocky Patel tubes in a Perspex case there so at that stage I had never really tried a premium cigar I tried something smaller like those, those backwards but that, that you wouldn't consider that premium so I was ready for a premium and I tried a Rocky Patel it was the 1990 vintage and the 1992 vintage and I was blown away I was I was expecting something harsh uh, strong because you know growing up in this country your your perceptions or the misinformation or just the lack of exposure and knowledge about cigars means that everyone tends to think of a big premium cigar as just a larger version of a cigarette because they don't know it's just pure ignorance I was also in that camp so I smoked those and I was massively impressed but they were about 140 Rand each back then So 140 Rand, not something I could buy every day or even every week. Um, but now I can't find them, They're, those supermarkets don't sell them, and even in tobacconists you will be hard pressed to find them, the ones that I've looked at anyway. We did find one recently, um, the price has shot up now, but it was some kind of anniversary special thingy and the price was 260 Rand. Now, granted it's probably a fancy pants Rocky Patel, one of his special anniversary releases. So 260 Rand is $17.33. Now I'm not gonna pay $17 for a cigar unless I know it's absolutely fantastic. And since I have no way of knowing just how good it is, I'm not gonna take that gamble. So, so that's the thing with the prices here in this country is I struggle to find something that fits my budget. Um, 
So I splashed out, I ended up coming home with nine cigars. I put them in my humidor, I'm a happy chappy, but now I'm down to, this is my, my second last cigar. And when my humidor is empty, you bastard, you've gone out on me. Anyway, give me a second. Okay, yeah, that's better. So, when your humidor is empty, you kind of, you feel empty inside. Now look, it's nice, it's nice to have that option. When your humidor is full of stogies, whether you smoke or not that day, it's just nice having that option. That you know, if I feel like it at the end of today, no matter how shitty today is, I can smoke a cigar. And that's lovely, it's just nice having those options. So. I decided that that would actually, that's probably the main reason why I'm growing my own tobacco, my own cigar tobacco. Um, I want to be able to have a nice big pile of stogies, and I will after this harvest is complete, and I've gone through the color curing, and I've gone through the kilning process that ferments the leaves, and then there's all the rolling and playing with the blends and seeing what works and what doesn't, and when I have a decent blend that tastes good, um, and really my cigars don't have to taste fantastic and I'm not under the illusion that they will taste like fine five-year-old tobacco I mean obviously not um, and the flavors might be a little bit jumpy and a little bit over the top um, so they won't be particularly smooth I know I'm under no illusion but if I can put a few away to age then I might actually achieve that one day um, but the main thing is that if I can end up with something that is smokable and half good I'll be happy because that will be my go-to cigar and my humidor will be full of sticks, full of opportunities for me to smoke whenever I damn well please. And that's actually what this all comes down to. I would like to smoke more and more often. My frequency would be something like three to four cigars in a week, which I think I'd be very comfortable with. Um, at the moment it's sort of one or two and then my humidor's empty and I smoke nothing for a couple of months and then it's one or two a week until my humidor's empty again. So. Um, what I also wanted to make clear, uh, you see what happened in our country, we've just come out of a alcohol ban and we've had two or three of these damn things during the COVID pandemic and um, apologies, there's a tractor that's moving up and down spraying some shit amongst the grapes. Harvest is in full swing so uh, the farm is very busy, that's why I'm not sitting outside under the oak tree filming even though it's a beautiful day, it's just too much noise. So you can hear in the background, and there's not much I can do about it, sorry. Anyway, so the lockdown and alcohol bans. Um, the logic behind the alcohol ban is uh, basically you can't go out and buy any beer or wine or spirits of any kind. And now they've lifted the ban so you can buy it on, uh, during the week between Mondays and Thursdays during business hours only and then it, there's a curfew for the alcohol over the weekend and so on and this is to stop that segment of society that insists on getting absolutely shit-faced every weekend and then shooting and stabbing each other um, so obviously you have lots of accident and emergency and ICU cases rocking up at the hospital people bleeding all over the place with stab wounds and gunshot wounds it's gang violence it's domestic violence unfortunately our country has a lot of that. So by banning alcohol, uh, a lot of it is fueled by alcohol and drugs, a lot of the violence. So by banning alcohol, those cases are actually brought down. The stats look, look very good and healthy when no one can drink alcohol. Um, so it gives the hospital staff more resources to deal with the COVID pandemic. So that, that logic kind of holds up on that side, but the effect it's had on the economy is just, I mean, it, the damage is huge. You've, we've got world-class restaurants here in the Western Cape, world-class chefs. You've got wine tasting facilities on farms which are, which are there to cater to those tourists who pay top dollar to you know, eat a fantastic meal and taste the absolute best that's out there. And with these bans in place, all that revenue just stops. Those, those venues take quite a lot of upkeep and so on so they rely on a steady income to keep everything going that's that's business and this, these bands have had a 
massive amount of damage, a huge impact on the economy of the Western Cape. So I don't know if the maths holds up. You know, you've got less ICU cases on the one hand, but massive damage to the economy on the other. And I personally think they could have handled it better. But what I actually wanted to get down to was the tobacco ban that they had last year. They actually had a tobacco ban. You could not buy cigarettes or any tobacco product of any kind while the ban was in place. And it was in place for a good couple of months. And the reasoning behind this, um, the reasoning was ludicrous. It was, it was just a big pile of nonsense. The health minister, um, she was going on about, you know, the poor people, the people in the low income bracket, the ones that buy those pouches of shredded tobacco and they make their rollies and then of course they lick those little rollies to seal them up, smoke and they pass it amongst each other. So her reasoning was that the saliva will pass the COVID around even more or it will spread the pandemic faster. Um, <laughs> it's just all that they managed to do was make everybody, every, every smoker absolutely miserable. Um, cigarette smokers are addicted to nicotine. It's what gets them through their day. Now, a friend of mine also did some YouTube videos and he went and interviewed a bunch of people. The black market tobacco industry went through the roof and we all suspect that the health minister had her fingers in the black market pie, which must have raked in a good few million for her. Because the prices went up to about 200 and even more for one pack of cigarettes. Compare that to an average price of say about 17 Rand, that's like $1, uh, up to 200 and something, what's that, about 17, 18 dollars for one pack of cigarettes. And uh, so this friend of mine went around and he interviewed some of these people from the lower income brackets and you know the poor poor people and uh, what they would do is buy these black market cigarettes and they'd smoke it and they'd pass it around so <laughs> nothing nothing changed nothing changed at all smokers will smoke cigarette smokers will continue smoking cigarettes i smoked nothing during that time because i had nothing to smoke and since i'm not addicted to nicotine um, it didn't really affect me that much. I was, I was quite fine. I was looking forward to my next cigar, obviously, in the same way that I look forward to a nice glass of wine with, my, with, with a meal. If I'm having a nice juicy steak, a glass of wine goes, goes very well with that. Um, it certainly doesn't mean I'm addicted to alcohol, does it? If I'm looking forward to a glass of wine. It's a perfectly normal thing to look forward to, and that's, that's the way most cigar smokers feel we are not actually addicted to nicotine we don't need nicotine you don't need to smoke a cigar during the day to get you through your day we tend to smoke on special occasions at the end of the day you need to carve out an hour of your time to really appreciate a fine cigar so i i get very i get very annoyed with the misconception that people will put cigars and cigarettes on equal footing when they are absolutely not the same fucking thing at all it really pisses me off it grinds my gears I will cover that in another video. I'm going to give a bit of a history lesson as well as to how the cigarettes arose and how they devastated the cigar industry and almost brought it crashing down. Anyway, we'll cover that in another video. Give it the old purge. Here we go. Mm. Delicious. Delicious. So, what I noticed from the tobacco ban was a lot of people looked into growing their own tobacco. And this was, this was the same with the alcohol. There were plenty of people firing up their little alcohol stills and creating their own moonshine. Uh, a lot of it wasn't half bad. <laughs> to be honest, I sampled uh, some very fine wares during, during the old alcohol ban. Uh, you, can, you can end up with some really potent shit. Man. It was good stuff. So, uh, so I wanted to make very clear that my cigar tobacco grow and uh, 
and my first one is in 2016, long before any signs of a pandemic. It's got nothing to do with the uh, alcohol, uh, alcohol ban, the tobacco ban that was in place. I'm not trying to be self-sufficient or distance myself from the cigar industry in any way. I love the cigar industry, I love being a part of it, I love being a consumer of cigars. I just wish I could consume more of them because there are so many brands out there and I'm still dying to try. So just to make that clear, it's got nothing to do with the tobacco ban. I'm not growing um, tobacco because I'm worried about any future bans or any of that nonsense. I just want a constant supply of cigars. And by growing my own stuff, I will enable myself to have a constant supply on hand. And then, the nice thing is, I can then take my budget, scrape my pennies and cents together, head off and buy something decent, buy some of the top brand cigars that I can then keep in my humidor uh, for special occasions. So, does that make sense to you guys? It certainly makes sense to me. Um, And that's another reason why I'm making YouTube videos as well, just to connect with people out there, find other like-minded people, um, because there's no one in my immediate vicinity that is doing what I'm doing. Nobody. I'm, I'm the one and only in this, in this area. I know there's somebody just across the mountain range uh, in Wellington. I know he's growing some, some stuff there. Oh, he did in the past. I'm not sure if he's doing right now. <coughs> just catching a bit in the back of my throat. And of course, there are some others around the country, but this is a big country and now scattered far and wide. Um, so thank goodness social media and the internet can sort of bind us together. But I still feel pretty lonely where I am with nobody in my immediate area. Um, smoking cigars even, never mind growing. There's, there's just, you, just, you just don't find many cigar smokers here, which is a shame. I would like to change that. I wouldn't mind starting a cigar club in the future, but I'm just going to focus on my grow for now and get those leaves um, color cured and kilned, fermented, and start rolling. And I'm excited to see what I come up with because it has been done in this country before, and the tobacco that that they've gotten after the whole process apparently has been very good quality, very good quality, very tasty. Um, because you hear of tobacco grown in other parts of the world, like China and so on, and they say that the tobacco tastes a bit flat, that it's, it's lacking something. Now obviously, maybe they're just comparing that to Cuban tobacco, and Cuban tobacco is like the gold standard, so maybe you know, it won't compare to that. But the tasting notes of the tobacco that has been grown in the north of this country um, the tasting notes has included things like, like chocolate notes of cocoa and so on. So I am looking forward to seeing what my leaves will taste like. And you know what? If they don't taste that great, it's something I can, I can work on. Maybe I need to improve the soil. I need to test my soil thoroughly, see what it needs, if there's anything lacking. And just um, add more compost and more minerals, maybe some more rock dust and so on. Um, to try and give the plants the best shot at producing something amazing. So, so there's that. So there we go. That's the main reason why I'm growing my own cigar tobacco, so that I have a constant and steady supply of cigars. And the reason why I'm making my videos is to connect to other people around the world show them what I'm doing, get other people interested, maybe stimulate a bit of uh, cigar culture right here where I am. And um, who knows, um, I'm not gonna count on it, but maybe in 10 years time, if I can launch my own brand, I know with my videos, I've kind of jumped the gun with my branding. I've got, you know, Sir Jardine Cigar Tobacco as my, my logo and my brand. I've kind of jumped the gun there a little bit, but yeah, it's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing to have a brand in place and if everything lines up and the stars line up and you never know I might be able to launch something one day even if it's just a little cigar club in this area I don't think we have any cigar clubs in this country so you know I see myself as a bit of a an ambassador for this kind of thing um, so maybe I should start something like that definitely something to consider that would be awesome 
So yeah, YouTube, Instagram, um, it's, it's actually been really fun just connecting with, with people all around the world, people who love smoking cigars, brothers and sisters of the leaf. It's just great to be a part of that family. Um, and I want to contribute in any way that I possibly can to the best of, of my um, abilities right now. I'm a firm believer in doing what you can with what you've got. And that's, that's what I'm trying to do here. And what I've also gone and done for myself by picking this very strange, might seem very strange to some people, hobby of growing your own cigar tobacco, I've picked something that's pretty open-ended. I mean, where's it gonna end? And the truth of the matter is that it probably won't end. There's no particular destination. Um, I've got four tobacco types, and once I've played with all the blends that you can possibly get out of that, then I can maybe expand and get some more space and grow some more varieties and try and get some more flavors in there. If I'm looking for some more creamy notes or some more earthy, minerally notes or whatever, I will do some research and see what else I can get out there. Um, this is something that can just go on until the day I die. And um, I was just having a think about this. You get some people, all their lives, they, uh, let's say for example, someone who's in a corporate setting. All right, you're a CEO or you're a, you're, some, you're a big shot in your company and you're walking around in your suit and you've got power meetings all day long. Um, and there are people that thrive on this kind of stuff. And then as you get older, um, your career comes to an end. The, the younger generation replaces you and you end up being put out to pasture. What happens to men and women of that caliber who've enjoyed a lot of success in their lives? What do they do next? And my theory is that if you have a damn interesting hobby on the side, then you sort it, you carry on. You plow all your time and your resources and your energy into your hobby, and that powers you on. It gives you something to, to, uh, to carry on, um, something worthwhile. And people who don't have anything like that on the side, they end up just fading away. How many times have you seen, and I've, I've seen, I've seen people who one moment they're still looking great in their old age, and then two years later they look so old and they're like fading away. It's like they have no more purpose in life. They have no more mission. And when you take, if you take a man and you give him a mission, he's got something to aim for. If you, if you, have, if you have a man without a mission, you kind of, you just kind of, you know, stagnation sets in and you just fade away. So, with something like this, I'm, I'll just carry on and on and on, just trying to find that perfect blend. I mean, it's, yeah, the palette keeps on evolving, the market will keep on evolving. Um, maybe I'll have a younger generation to pass on my knowledge on to or whatever, but I can see myself at a hundred, you know, still tending my backy patch and yelling at some underlings to, you know, pick those leaves and get them in the barn. So, so I think that's good. There's always something for me to, to focus on and to keep on doing and, um, also, if you end up, you know, if you have a hobby that forces you to continue learning, to continue researching, to continue, there comes a tractor again. You know what I'm saying. Um, that you just, you, you keep, you must never stop learning, basically, is what I'm trying to say. And something like this, with so many brands and so many types of cigars out there, and they'll probably find new areas to grow tobacco in as well, which will come up with, you know, come up with different flavors. But that's what I'd like to do here in South Africa as well. I know I'm drifting off topic here and there, um, but maybe there are certain parts of South Africa where the soil will actually impart a very specific flavor, which you might end up with a unique wrapper, for example. Maybe a unique Western Cape wrapper. You never know. But what I'm saying is, 20 years from now, 30 years from now, if I continue doing what I'm doing, I'm sure there are going to be some interesting opportunities, opportunities that will arise from this. And you never know. I mean, constantly making random connections with people on the other side of the world, you just never know when something's going to line up, something amazing, and, um, and you can take your little hobby to new heights. So that's pretty much all I want to share with you guys today. I'm so thankful that 
guys are watching my videos and enjoying them and liking them and if you haven't subscribed then please consider doing so like I said I'm, I'm not I'm not gonna typically do any reviews um, I'm gonna start rolling my my own cigars and uh, start looking at the flavor notes I'll, I'll share my findings with you but ideally I will be giving my my cigars once they've they've sat and aged enough that I find that the flavors have sort of smoothed out enough I will give them to some other people with um, with better palettes than mine more experienced palettes and see what they think and then I will pass those findings on to you so yeah what a fantastic hobby. Oh, and another thing between you and me. I must do some more research into this. Uh, this this anti-smoking movement, this anti-tobacco movement. I just read, I was skimming some article briefly. And there was something about um, trying to make a tobacco-free generation by 2040 I think I'm gonna deliberately start a, a cigar label and on that label is gonna be something like last stand 2040 because when 2040 comes around I'm gonna make damn sure that there's piles and piles of tobacco okay that's not gonna be a tobacco free generation I'm sorry I know they mean cigarettes that's actually that's their agenda their agenda is to get rid of cigarettes across the board and and they have a point. I don't. I don't like seeing teenagers um, sucked into smoking, and because it tends to be cigarettes, that's that's where they get on the tobacco train. And cigarettes, I feel, is not the way to go because it definitely gets you hooked on nicotine. And once you're hooked on nicotine, you have those um, those withdrawal symptoms to deal with, and it's just a roller coaster of continuously smoking in order to keep those withdrawal symptoms at bay which is a very, very, very different scenario to somebody enjoying a fine cigar once in a while. And a cigar smoker will typically smoke one, maybe two cigars in a day. And I'm nowhere near that frequency. I'll smoke one or two a week <laughs> at the moment. So the health effects are, in my case, very positive. There's absolutely nothing negative about smoking. Something that contains no chemicals whatsoever It's just lovely aged pure natural leaf um, yes there is nicotine in there but it's it's a very slow acting you know you don't draw the smoke into your lungs so it's not that rapid uh, nicotine high that cigarette smokers experience which is why that vicious dependency cycle never forms in your typical cigar smoker Anyway, um, I said I'd cover that in another video, and here I am waffling on about that. Um, so yes, 2040, I'll be here with shitloads of beautiful, beautiful tobacco. I'm gonna make damn sure of it. So that's a little, a little target I'm gonna set myself. That generation will have tobacco, trust me. Anyway, love you guys. Keep safe, keep smoking those beautiful cigars, and I will catch you in the next video.